Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to get the score you deserve on the NPTE. So as we begin, just a quick reminder that you can check out ptfinalexam.com for all the information you need in order to pass the NPTE and not just pass it, absolutely dominate it. Also, as we begin, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the effort you put into this. Thank you for spending time with me on this podcast. And thanks for becoming an excellent clinician. I know that it will benefit not just you, but your patients for years and years to come. So thank you for your efforts as you go through this. And as I've said before, anything that's worth doing usually comes at a price. And so in this case, you are paying the price now and it is definitely worth it. On this side of, of the licensure exam, let me just tell you that it's, uh, it's a great profession. I continue to practice as a PT. I very much enjoy it. And it's something that I'm truly passionate about. So again, just a reminder that you can pick up some of our freebies over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. We had a special giveaway for our 100th episode a few episodes ago, but you can still take advantage of that for a limited time. Head over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast to grab our free practice questions as well as some cheat sheets. I think you'll enjoy that. Be sure to sign up over there at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast as quick as you can. Plus, if you enjoy the audio version of this podcast, you may enjoy the video version as well, where you're able to see the question. You can check us out over on YouTube. Just check out or search for PT Final Exam over on YouTube, and you'll be able to take advantage of our questions over there as well. So today we'll be talking through a practice question per our usual. Uh, today we're talking the lymphatic system. So as you know, the lymphatic system has somewhere between three and eight questions on it. And today we'll be talking through an interventions-based question and I think you'll enjoy it. We'll go through the question as per our usual. I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll head into the answer together. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question. A patient with lymphedema is undergoing physical therapy treatment to reduce and disperse lymph fluids. When applying compression garments, which of the following initial interventions is most important? One, compression bandaging should be worn 10 to 12 hours per day. Two, distal segments should have greater pressure than proximal segments. Three, long stretch bandages should be applied to proximal segments. And four, smaller radius limb segments require less or lesser bandage pressure. So again, the question is, a, a patient with lymphedema is undergoing physical therapy to reduce and disperse lymph fluids. When applying compression garments, which of the following initial interventions is most important? One, compression bandaging should be worn 10 to 12 hours per day. Two, distal segments should have greater pressure than proximal segments. Three, long stretch bandages should be applied to proximal segments. And four, smaller radius limb segments require lesser bandage pressure. All right, so the correct answer on this one, as far as what is most important, the distal segments should have greater pressure than the proximal segments. So what, uh, as you consider what this means, this means that you should have a pressure gradient going from more pressure distally to greater pressure prox... Let's see, pfft, am I saying this right? Distal segments should have greater pressure to the lesser pressure of the proximal segment. So think of it this way, that you don't want to create a constriction or a constricture at, say, the wrist or the elbow if you're wrapping the entire upper extremity. Rather, you'd want the greater pressure to be on the smaller diameter limb segments, we're talking about the fingers and hand, and a lesser pressure on the greater diameter. So again, this is this is just following the same principle that we want all the fluid to be dispersed from distal to proximal. We want it to come towards the core. So in order to do, to do that, you put greater pressure at the distal segment than at the proximal segment. So again, the correct answer is saying the distal segments should have greater pressure than the proximal segments. All this means for compression garments is that you put a little more pressure distally so that it squeezes the fluid out and you don't want to create any constrictions or restrictions in flow by having too much pressure at the proximal segment. So for instance, at the hand, very often we wrap the fingertip, well, not just often, but if you're wrapping the hand, you'd wrap the fingertips first with the greatest amount of pressure. And then as you work your way proximally, usually in a figure eight pattern, but as you work your way proximally, you would put less pressure into the garment so that you would be able to have adequate lymph flow. Now, very often what'll happen is that 
uh, when you're doing a, a full bandaging system, that you'll actually pad around. So like the wrist is a good example. The wrist could could be a, a constriction point because you go from a wider hand to a narrower wrist. And so generally speaking, they will pad up the wrist in order to allow the flow to go unencumbered. So they pad up the wrist to make it a little bit fatter so they can wrap around a larger radius object or larger radius, larger radius limb. All this still follows the same principle that you want more pressure distally to push the fluid proximally. And this follows along with manual lymphatic drainage techniques. You want all the strokes to be in the direction of flow. You want all the strokes to push the fluid from distal to proximal. But remember, there is one funny thing, and I guarantee they'll test you on this, that you have to clear out the proximal segments first. So meaning that you have to clear out the axilla and the groin, or even the, the trunk and the abdominal region, you have to clear that first before moving to more distal segments, but everything is always in the direction of flow. You always want the lymph to flow towards the heart. And so it's just a question of getting the traffic jam uncleared or, or let's say, yeah, the tra traffic jam cleared out. These other answer options, compression bandaging should be worn 24 hours a day. Uh, the We never use long stretch bandages, long stretch bandages. Uh, they just create too much pressure, too much resting pressure, which would restrict the flow of lymph fluid. And then the final option is smaller radius limb segments require lesser bandage pressure. That's opposite. Smaller radius limb segments require greater pressure. So all things considered, you'll have the distal segments with greater pressure than the proximal segments with short stretch bandages, everything pushing the fluid in the direction of flow. So there you go. That's our question on the lymphatic interventions. So again, as you consider the, lymph, the lymphatic system, there's somewhere between three and eight questions related to this. In our VIP course and our independent course, I've got content related to the lymphatic system that I think you'll really enjoy. I go through each of the examination, differential diagnosis, and intervention section of the lymphatic system. Uh, again, just kind of a handy and concise way to go through what can be a rather plaguing and vexing system I try to break it, really break it down and make it simple for you. And really that's, I've discovered that that's really how I'm making my living these days is by taking the complex topics and making them simple so you can remember them on test day. And that's the goal here at PT Final Exam is to help you just dominate on test day. So with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Just a reminder, check out ptfinalexam.com slash podcast where you can get all of our free giveaways. Also, you can check out our courses. We've got a crash course coming up before every test date. So we are just starting that for our PTs or PTAs and then our PTs uh, for each of their respective test dates. And then I've got some fun stuff coming up for the VIP class coming up for the summer. I think you'll enjoy that as well. But if you do have any questions or need anything, please head over to ptfinalexam.com. And uh, if you've got a group of five or more, we can get you some pretty sweet discounts. Head over to the contact tab and we can get you hooked up. So... With that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Again, thank you so much for hanging out with me. We'll crane fist pumps all around, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks.